Welcome to Entrepreneurs of You know, I was going to say welcome to my whole spiel and everything else, but I am fascinated, fascinated by your books, by your art, that I can't stop looking at it. And, 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 and even, I, it's just a fascinating thing. With us, we have you, Jill Yellen. Yes. Did I say it correctly? Perfect. Man, I've been practicing all morning. <laughs> How you doing, man? Great, thanks. You thanks. are, let me tell you something. I mean, I, I, I love art. As you can see here at the office pile, we love local artists. We love photographers. We love artists, murals, etc., etc. We're surrounded by art. What I love about you, and the reason that we're here is because you're going to have uh, your art um, exposed here starting November 2015 for a couple of months, hopefully longer. But what I love about you is that your photographs are insulting. And I say that in, a, in, in the most respectful and uh, uh, positive way. And they're insulting because they're challenging. It makes us think. Where is the line between art, porn, avant-garde, where is that line? And I think that what you do, at least from my perspective, what do I know, right? But from where I sit, I think that your art is, as I said, insulting, but it's provocative. Uh, it, it definitely is. Um, and I've, you know, I've been inspired since I was very young by the images of others. And in some of the images I was inspired by then um, would have been considered provocative at the time, and now it wouldn't be considered so. Um, so I, I go for the images that kind of excite me. Um, and, and depending on my audience, um, I may or may not show them certain things because not everybody is, is open to accepting them. I, explain that. Because art, art is art, right? I mean, if, if you look at, um, at the Michelangelo, are there appropriate um, age groups that should see that, to see that nude? Uh, or should we exclude perhaps the younger ones and explain to them, no, 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 that's, that's art that you can't see. Uh, so explain to me why you are making that, that distinction. Because to me, this is art in, in a... Um, in a very provocative way that should be exposed to anybody. And, and if you are young enough to recognize this as art, then maybe you are growing up. Uh, maybe you should start very young appreciating art. Why not? Um, you know, that, that's, that's almost uh, as personal as the religious question and, and about as provocative. Uh, to give an example, uh, what is it, that, that temple in, is it Palmyra, where they're blowing up the temple? Yes, 2,000-year-old. 2,000-year-old so, architecture, art architecture. Yes, yes. It's, yes, it's, it's yes. art, right? Of course. And there are people destroying it because they feel that it's whatever they feel, that they feel that it needs to be obliterated. Um, art, if somebody doesn't hate your art, it's probably not art. If it doesn't give an emotional, visceral reaction, and usually a multitude of reactions. It, it may not be art, if that makes any sense to you. It, it makes sense, and, and you said something that if you, if you didn't hate what you see, or didn't have a reaction, let's call it like that, then it's probably not, a, it's not art, right? I mean, yeah. we all take pictures of our babies, of our families, of our cousins, and everything else, and that doesn't give any visceral. So then, it, therefore, it's just a picture, it's not art. But the moment you take a provocative picture, um, and let's, you know, enough talk, man. I mean, I, let, me, let me show this up right here. What's the name of this? Of this, of this Alice. Picture? That's Alice, as in Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. And, and again, is, it's not your typical Alice, man. I mean, this is, this is Alice in an entirely different Matter and what we're seeing here. This is this is podcast and video cast. So for those uh, people that can't really see this art, d describe it for us. Describe it for us. Well, this is uh, first of all, it's it's done in layers. Um, she's wearing body paint, 
which many people don't realize. She's wearing the shoes, she's wearing the cuffs and the hat and a blue wig, and, and she's largely just wearing paint on her body. And we shot that in what was my living room with a very talented uh, body paint artist, um, Visualized Creativity. And she also did the makeup and it's all beautiful. We, sh we shot it on white and then another artist, um, No Regrets, out of New York collaborated to work on putting in the background and, and organizing all that. We've created this. This is one of my most popular pieces. People tend to love it and not be offended. And it's a naked girl wearing paint. And, and I think that the fact that people do not realize that this is a naked woman wearing body paint, nothing but body paint, Perhaps it makes it a little bit more acceptable? It makes it, it, it seems to be largely mainstream acceptable today, here, now. Some, not everywhere. Let's talk about um, your book. Um, let's talk about this one, Alternative Nudes. Creative Lightning and, and Posting for Photographers. So this is more of an educational book, uh, how to um, set your, um, your subjects in, in the proper lighting, et cetera, et cetera. Who reads this book? Um, the book is primarily written for photographers. It's got lighting diagrams. Uh, it talks about my view of what photography is or can be today. Um, there are a lot of quote unquote purists, for instance, who, who think that photography has to be done with film in a dark room, like it's been done that way for 10,000 years and you couldn't do it that way. Photography itself is evolving. Photography itself is new and constantly changing. So this is my way of doing it. I shoot digitally, I edit the images. I'm looking to create the most powerful, most impactful image that fits my vision of what, what makes an image striking, what makes you want to look at an image, what gives you a feeling from the image. All right. so, so where do you find these models? Do you just go up to someone and say, hey baby, you look real good. I want to photograph you. I've tried that. It works <laughs> remarkably not well. It works remarkably not well. But I continue to try it. So, uh, somebody, somebody standing in a star in a line for a coffee, right at Starbucks, and she's looking incredibly good, and you already have her. Like you're probably going yeah. like this, right? You're like, I'd like to photograph you. Uh, does that I, does that work? <laughs> it doesn't work, but um, I. The, my pictures, if you've looked at them, they're very angular. Yes. Um, they often incorporate faces and, and expressions. And, and part of what I like to shoot is people who have interesting angles on their body or who might be dancers and can hold themselves in certain ways that I can get the angles that, I, that I'm looking for. And not everybody has those. And I will see that person like right there and I'm like, here, you know, look at my stuff and come sit for me. And, it doesn't work, but I keep trying. I mean, that's part of what it is. Not everything works, but you got to keep trying, right? The models that you have here, uh, it, 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 it seems to me that they're incredibly, first of all, they're, they're incredibly comfortable with the way that they look, with their, with their bodies. And they're not afraid to uh, expose themselves to your lens. They're very comfortable. That's, you know, that's, that's great that you see that. Um, but I, I got to tell you, um, probably at least more than half of the people in there um, are not that experienced as models um, right. and, and are not that comfortable in front of the lens. The, the comfort is a thing you build up with, you know. With, There's got to be a trust, own. right? There has to be a trust and, and that's developed. First, they see your work. And, and if they see your work, if someone else they, they know has, has shot with you, you, you get that going for you. It's really hard to, to say that line about, hey, I'm going to photograph you if you don't have a body of work. Once you have a sure. body of work and you know it's going to be great, you're still sitting on the other side of the camera, you go, I'm not going to look good. I never take a good picture. And then after you start seeing that, yes, it can happen, then you start to relax. What, was, was, there, was, there, was there a chance that you're, you started a session with someone and that person said, you know what, I, I just don't want to do this. I, I just don't feel like it. Uh, you know, I've had that happen not recently. And, and I know why it happened. And it's because when you're on the other side of the camera, yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's a lot of power. And people are relying on you to do things. And whenever you are taking a photograph of someone and they know they're being photographed, like some of my stuff is editorial. You know, I might have a long lens and I might take a picture of someone in a public place. They may not know they're being shot. But when they know they're being photographed, 
um, somebody has to be in control of that situation. And where I've had the disasters is where I've relied too heavily on the person who was on the other side of the lens to uh, contribute to the vision of where things were going. And in that have lost control of the situation in ways that became uncomfortable for everybody. So if I, can, if, if I know what I'm doing and if I maintain control, things work out great. So, so the subject becomes self-aware. Self-aware or um, they, they lose confidence in the photographer. Oh, okay. If you're the photographer and you've done it long enough, you know not to let that subject have control. Because if they do, um, then, well, they don't know what they're seeing. And why are they here for you, right? The, they're here for you because you're the guy who knows what he's doing and you have to tell them what to do and you have to tell them what's acceptable and what's not and if the shoot comes apart you have to be the one saying you know we're not going to do this so as a photographer you have to be a coach you have to be of course have a great vision of how you want that particular post translated into into the photograph right into right. The paper but at the same time you have to you have to become their best friend for that moment because yes. they have to trust you just implicitly to whatever you're saying. And, th and that applies whether you're doing a headshot or you know if the person's nude. Um, the, when they're nude, they're they're far more vulnerable than in almost any situation um, because not only are they nude, you're going to have pictures of them being nude, and they pictures want that are going to are going to be seen by thousands and tens of thousands of people or it could be a private session it it, it 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 doesn't matter you're taking a picture of someone in a way that we've been taught we're vulnerable in particular if you're nude if they're doing if you're doing a headshot if you don't make them look okay or great um, then they're putting that forward to the world so you, you have a lot of responsibility when you're on the other side of the lens to to really produce something that will make the person feel good about themselves. And you can if you know what you're doing. When you're in this, in this business, you're going to have uh, a share of critics and haters that will, for whatever reason, religious or, uh, or just from an art appreciation point of view, that will say, you know what, this is not good. Do you have those people? Um, and how do you deal with them? You know, uh, you, you do have those people. Um, I don't see it too often because you know, I, I don't walk down the, the middle of the, the road with something that's that controversial that I'm, that I'm showing. Um, you have to show in, in places where the people who are coming are coming to see something. You've got it. Um, so, and, and it's you know somewhat being respectful. Like I don't pull out the alternative nudes uh, book when I meet someone. I ask them, uh, you know, are are you do you like nudes? Are you comfortable looking at nudes before I, I show one? Because you have to be respectful of people too. Um, sure. If they don't want to see that, I mean, I don't like seeing blood and gore. So if someone's showing it to me, I turn away. I just don't care to see it. Good analogy. Um, and you probably, for those people who do not like uh, or feel a little bit repulsed by the nudes, then you have this other book, which is The Phoenix Street People, mm -hmm. Summer 2012. And um, this is wonderful. In fact, uh, let, me, let me pull this, this beautiful, beautiful piece right here, <coughs> right there. Tell us about this. What is this? Um, well, this was, this was a really interesting shot. Um, this was a project that I came out of a, a pizza shop on 12th Street and uh, I was going home and there was a gentleman who was sort of passed out um, right there next to the cooler at the Circle K and uh, he, uh, he was just there and I, I ran home, got my camera, came back, he was still there and I started photographing him and he had like horrible teeth and then I photographed these ladies walking up and they just kind of looked at him, got in their car and drove away. And I decided I was going to photograph street people that day. And I was down um, around 19th Avenue on the west side of town somewhere. And I'm driving with my window open because I'm looking for street people. And I'm getting them here and there. And I hear this horrendous sound. And it's this guy. And he's like, you know, like, <laughs> like making like horrible sounds. Wow. But, but it wasn't just snoring. It was like scary sounds. And there's this guy and he's laying there 
on his back. Every so often he's making a sound. So I park my car and I get my camera and I slowly, slowly approach him. And when I'm about 10 feet away, he opens his eyes and he looks at me. And at that moment, I wasn't quite sure which way this was going to go, but I was far enough away. And, and he was a great guy. And uh, he had this T-shirt on that says, Got Teeth. He had a T-shirt on that says, Got Teeth, <laughs> which you're laughing, but the guy before, his teeth were a mess. That's amazing. And he had this on, and I started talking to him about his life, and he was awesome to talk to. And that's the Bible that was on his chest, and that's his hand. I don't know if you can see. You can yes, see of the, course. His fingernails, and the Bible is open to, like, this, well, it's this page is coming out. This yes. Little, if you read down, it's really, you know, cool. Like, I get chills still talking about it. And... And, you know, he was, he was just a guy who was in the shade of a transformer in the morning when it was really hot. And, Amazing. And this, is, this is really a very, very, very powerful image right here. Um, and uh, I am, I tell you what, man, I, uh, Eugel, I am very proud that you brought this pieces, that you are here in Phoenix really breaking just the, the, just the regular... Um, idea of what we traditionally conceive art as, and for me, it opens up, uh, you know, a whole new, new, uh, new venue of uh, art appreciation. And I would love for other people here in Phoenix, and, and we will have the amazing opportunity for you to come in and expose an article like Galleria here at the at the office piled in November and December. Your pictures and the people that are going to come. I hope that they have a very open mind about what they're going to see, what they're going to experience. Because watching this, reading about you, is an experience, man. It's beautiful. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, you see? Things fly. And I know you like the color black, so we got you a, uh, a nice t-shirt, man. Oh, An you. office pile t-shirt. And this is, you probably know him, this is um, Angie uh, Sequoia who, who did this for us right here. And um, he's, a, he's a friend of the office pile. He's also just a phenomenal artist. And uh, maybe someday you, uh, uh, you photograph, maybe you photograph me in the nude, man. I'll be, <laughs> Jesus. You lose a lot of customers that way, brother. So anyway. Not maybe. We're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. You're going to have to come back. And yes, you are going to be here at the office pile with your pictures, with your photographs, and with your collection, man. We love you, man. Thank you. We're out.